Hello, my friends, and welcome back. Thank you for being with me again today. <clears throat> um, I can't believe that uh, the, these experts that are uh, leading us economically and militarily and politically are so, um, I don't know, trivial, I think, uh, frugal about uh, their job or the, whatever they are supposed to be experts in or experts of. Um, when the um, Russia-Ukraine war started, uh, it seemed, seemed like uh, the, these experts were caught by surprise somehow, and their um, assessments were that, you know, for instance, um, well, let's impose a, uh, a, uh, some sanctions on the Russian um, oil, gas, and you know, the fossil fuel resources, and uh, we're gonna be good. Uh, the ruble will uh, hit the ground. Uh, the Russian economy will go bankrupt, and in about two weeks, uh, probably uh, Russia will give up and say, "You know what? We can't uh, do anything because we uh, we lost the war economically, if not uh, militarily." Uh, nevertheless, it didn't happen. Uh, it didn't happen. On the contrary, it seems like uh, Russians were already ready for this for some time. And for every action that the Westerns uh, implemented, like uh, sanctions or this and that, the Russians immediately had a counter uh, action. So they countered it with something, and then uh, uh, they like they were already ready for that, which I think they were. And uh, for instance, uh, okay, you don't want our oil? They found different markets already. Different uh, players would buy that. Uh, okay, you don't want um, uh, to get our, uh, uh, you know. Um, our dollars or whatever to pay our foreign debt, we're going to find a way still. Uh, our creditors uh, are yours as well, not only ours. We don't want to upset them. So um, this is, uh, they, it seemed like they didn't think through what bef before uh, placing sanctions because it affects Europe and the global economy more than they expected. They're willing to take this risk or take this, uh, you know, sanctions uh, consequences uh, and why not? They are doing very well up there. We are not. So we, that we will be more affected than they will be affected. But on the other hand, right now, they're trying to uh, antagonize China. And with the same thing, with the same thing, they try to put it in the corner and see if China is going to uh, surrender. China will not surrender because China is already doing some hanky-panky in the Pacific Ocean with some islands, including the Solomon Islands. Uh, and in the Latin America, where uh, one way the foreign minister is going to go and visit about, I don't know, a, uh, a few countries over there and try to make some deals and sign some paper with these guys. And they have about 20, 20 uh, officials traveling with him, so that's a big entourage. So now China <laughs> is not a small country and it has a lot of uh, resources that this globalist uh, economy or global economy needs because uh, globalism now we are in the turn, um, interdependent to one another. So uh, then if you uh, put sanctions in a country that, in a, that has a lot of resources, then you shoot yourself in the foot as well. That's globalism. Uh, um, or, no, it's a consequence of, of globalism. So this article comes from The Telegraph by Ambrosi Evans Pritchard. May 24th, 2022, and this is the title, China's dominance of critical minerals may be as dangerous for Europe as Russia's energy weapon. So basically, if we're going to do the same thing with, with China, we're going to uh, you know, shoot ourselves in the foot for other commodities or other resources that these guys have, you know, critical minerals for our policies of Green uh, New Deal and blah, blah, blah. So. Europe's leaders are increasingly, increasingly worried that the EU, European Union, will jump from the frying pan into the fire as it breaks dependence on Russia fossil fuels, becoming equally dependent on supplies of strategic minerals controlled by China. Ursula von der Leyen, the European Commission's president, said Brussels is scrambling to lock in a long-term supply of critical raw materials vital needed to underpin its Green Deal and its vast expansion of renewable power, seeking accords with friendly countries as surging, as surging global demand for green tech resources for 
far exceeds existing supply from minerals. It has already signed a deal with Canada. So you see, Canada will provide this, United States will provide uh, liquefied natural gas and some oil from our, uh, our, <laughs> our um, strategic oil reserves in Texas. So do you see a trend here? Europe depends on some. So before, let's say, it depend on Russia on fossil fuel. And now it depends, gonna depend on the other, the other side of the Atlantic. This guy is gonna be, uh, need, uh, you know, minerals. They don't. They are afraid they will not take it from China if they, if they continue to antagonize it. And I think that's the plan, and it's gonna go through. They already make plans again with a country over the Atlantic. So you will not depend on person A, you will depend on person B. Why? Because person B somehow is the good one and person A somehow is the bad one. Which, as I always said, it's not all good or bad. They all have good and bad, uh, you know, uh, policies and history is a uh, witness to that. So the economies of the uh, future will no longer rely on coal and oil, but on lithium for batteries, on silicon metal for chips, on rare earth permanent ma magnets, magnets for ele electric vehicles and wind tur turbines, she told the World Economic Forum in da Davos. Well, that's a choice. And besides, uh, how, do you, uh, how do you process lithium? You have to mine it, and then you have to process it, and then you have to use it. All that process is gonna use energy and it's not gonna be that clean. The same thing with uh, the batteries, and then you have the magnets. All those things need a techno uh, technological, metallurgical process to be uh, provided as a product that you can use in your cars or windmills or whatever that might be. How do you do that? With your renewable energy? Um, um, so uh, you see when these guys are saying, well, you know what, this battery uh, ran uh, uh, cars, you know, like Tesla or other ones, uh, they're clean energy and I'm going to buy it. How was that car built? You know, it runs on lithium batteries. Maybe you can check the, how the technological process occurs to get that battery done from the A to Z, the lithium, and find out how clean that is. But nevertheless, it's just you know, for us to uh, ride behind something that uh, they want us to. Uh, the green and digital uh, transitions will massively increase our need for these materials. Transition decided by you. Was there a referendum? Maybe, you know, some of my people do not uh, really jump on that boat, but they think better. They think for us, they make decisions for us because we elected them over there, right? So they have a free hand to do whatever they want, four years, five years, whatever their term is, right? However, access is not a given. For many of them, we rely on a handful of producers in the world. We must avoid falling into the same trap as, as with oil and gas, she said. As I said, yeah, you're not going to depend on China, you're going to depend on Canada. Good job. Remember Trudeau and uh, um, Truckers Convoy and see how uh, beautiful that uh, occurred. So uh, that might happen to you too, you know, if they don't like you, but nevertheless. So this is the problem with, um, you know, it says that China already has a strategic lock hold over rare earth metals used across the spectrum for advanced technolo technology, not just for green energy and artificial intelligence, but also for military uh, lasers, missiles, and satellites. Beijing is fast acquiring dominance over global supply of, of cobalt and graphite over 98 uh, percent of permanent magnets typically requiring neodymium come from China. Neodymium, yeah. What do you want? Uh, price, prices in lithium carbonate uh, have risen almost tenfold this year. Cobalt is up by 150 points uh, and uh, nickel fuels have almost doubled. Futures, nickel futures almost double. So the IA, IEA calculates that the cathode materials is in battery packs for electric cars have jumped from 5 to 20 percent uh, uh, of the total cost in less than a decade well and then it's just a 
Well, what can you do? You do whatever you want, uh, I guess, and uh, see where that gets you. But as I said, you're going to switch one master, if you want to put it that way, for another master. Um, yeah, keep, uh, keep uh, you know, um, show your morality and, uh, you know, posture up there and say, hey, you're like this, you're bad, you're bad. And uh, they will not uh, supply you with uh, what you need and what they're going to do. Have a lower standard of living. Or you can always blame them. That's why we have a uh, shitty life, because those guys. Not because our policies, but because those guys. Well, thank you very much for being with me again today. Stay strong, stay smart, look for the truth and be just.